Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another interview of our Aviation Week Network ATW Leadership Forum. My name is Kurt Hoffmann. I'm correspondent for ATW, and today I have the, the pleasure to talk to the CEO of Sun Express, a joint venture between Lufthansa and Turkish Airlines. Sun Express, Mr. Max Kovnatsky. Max, or Max, as we talk in English, thank you for your time. Good to talk to you, and I hope you're doing well. Kurt, thanks for having me. Appreciate it to be on your show. Uh, Max, uh, Sun Express uh, is uh, an airline which operates with around 60 aircraft, mainly in Europe, and uh, do a lot of leisure traffic, but also traffic for people who live between Germany and Turkey. And of course, every airline is affected by the pandemic crisis. Can you give us, before we talk uh, the further developments of your airline, which ideas and how you see the outlook for, for your company, what's the current status of uh, Sun Express at the moment? And please. Uh, Kurt, maybe before we go into um, the pandemic and the market outlook and, and Sun Express, um, I just learned about, uh, about an hour ago um, about the earthquake in Izmir And uh, maybe before we start going into um, our, our business topics, I would love to uh, share uh, some thoughts and uh, want to let everyone working on this crisis right now that uh, you're in my thoughts, in my prayers, and that uh, fingers crossed um, everyone will come out of the safe. So uh, best of luck. And um, I'm sending you my strength, energy, and, and all the good vibes and hope uh, that um, the uh, folks from Izmir Uh, will come out of this uh, crisis. I will do my utmost uh, to support this. And again, uh, you're in our thoughts and prayers. We're thinking of you. Oh, thanks for this message. How many people from Sun Express working for you in Izmir? I, I understand there's a base from your company. That's that's right. Actually, a, a very busy base. We have 753 employees in Izmir right now. Uh, so far, again, this is a, a breaking news. Um, I know the this show will be sent out a little later, but. Uh, Right now, we're, um, we have reports back of uh, 67% of our, of our staff being safe. Um, again, this number is tracking upwards. Hopefully, we'll uh, be able to achieve the 100% um, in, in uh, a timely manner. Uh, good. Let's hope for the best. So um, uh, how is Sun Express doing in these days? Uh, so you're very much related on leisure traffic, for example. So what's your current capacity? How is business doing? Right. Well, first of all, maybe uh, about my role as a CEO, and uh, as some people may know, I uh, only took this job uh, as of April 15th, so right on time for the crisis. Um, and uh, <laughs> literally, I think uh, on my uh, first official day, April 15th, uh, we had uh, our meeting with the, the board of directors, and um, I uh, will never forget that day. Um, because this is uh, really when um, a lot of hard decisions and uh, the the first sort of looming um, aspect of the pandemic was uh, was over us, and we had to look into um, into what that would mean for Sun Express. Uh, Sun Express is or or was uh, for that matter uh, a setup. Again, you already mentioned it in your in your intro of fifty percent Lufthansa a group and fifty percent uh, Turkish Airlines. Um, there is a Sun Express Turkey. We refer to it as SXS. Uh, which again holds uh, 100% of Sun Express Germany SXD. And the Sun Express Germany um, uh, a branch and AOC, uh, unfortunately, uh, over the course of time, we realized that given the severe impact of the pandemic, we were not able uh, to uh, keep alive. And hence, um, at, in the middle of June, we decided to liquidate um, with a board decision to liquidate the German part of Sun Express, this made up roughly 20 aircraft, some of them flying for Lufthansa Group. Our long haul 330 operation, for example, was, uh, was part of the Sun Express uh, Germany uh, branch. Um, so that was, a, that was a hard start. <laughs> and, uh, and as many other airline CEOs, uh, the last six months were very busy, very challenging, um, and, uh, and also, Again, uh, our hearts go out to the colleagues from uh, Sun Express Germany, for which uh, we have tried to find other opportunities, either with our shareholders or on the open market. Um, so that was that was the start. Um, even though this is this was very sad news, at the same time we obviously focused on our Turkish operation, as you mentioned. The remainder is about 60, 65 aircraft, mm -hmm. um, a full seven thirty seven 
operation. I'm sure that's a, a topic in terms of fleet we'll also address uh, shortly. Sure. Um, and that we're uh, a 737 MAX um, uh, ordering, ordering airline. We'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that too. But the SXD liquidation did help us um, in terms of focusing on um, our Turkish uh, European traffic. We have three customer segments, the uh, visiting friends and relatives segment, which is the ethnic um, you know, family uh, visits uh, between Turkey and uh, Western European countries. We have the classic touristic segment and uh, we have uh, a domestic segment. And uh, these segments have shifted in size and importance for us uh, during this crisis. And I'll shed a little more light on that uh, in, in a few seconds, probably. Please. Oh, well, as this three yeah, yeah, I can, I can carry on. Sure. No problem. Um, we've seen, for example, uh, I mean, the, the immediate impact of the crisis and as many other airlines, we've put up a new uh, restructuring cost reduction program, quite ambitious target. We're, uh, you know, one of the lowest cask operators in the industry. Um, and as such, you know, squeezing out a, a three digit million number is not an easy endeavor. Uh, we're making good strides and progress on that number. And um, as such are uh, pretty hopeful um, for the future. I think again, with the SXD liquidation, this cost restructuring program uh, being well underway and the assumption that a market would be picking up again, uh, I think uh, Sun Express is, is very well set up for the future. Um, and this is something I'm actually looking forward to uh, the market to pick back up. So um, uh, the, yeah, window, go ahead, yeah. the, the window which is coming is very tough for all the airlines in Europe actually, and there's really a weak demand, but you have these three segments like the domestic flying for Anadolu jet, I think you mean, is it also that you do some uh, work for Turkish airlines for their low cost subsidiary Anadolu jet? These three segments will help you through a difficult time before hopefully a good summer maybe is coming up again for, for the aviation industry. This is a good survival modus for you? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And you mentioned the, the Turkey traffic, you mentioned the Anadolu jet, a Turkish 100% uh, Turkish airline subsidiary. Um, and so we're flying 15 aircraft for them. Um, you know, let me just give you one example. Uh, our domestic Turkish uh, travel uh, segment in the past was about 10, 12% of our capacity share. Mm -hmm. This number has gone up through the crisis um, to almost 25%. So a quarter of our traffic is now within domestic. And, and Kurt, you know, it's interesting. We have uh, uh, capacity numbers, as I mentioned, about 80% of 2019 levels flying in Turkey. And at the same time, they're flying with load factors between 75 and 80%. So this is a segment, you know, that actually, you know, carries us quite well. Yes, there's obviously price developments, yield developments, and also uh, foreign exchange rate or Turkish lira, um, you know, uh, devaluation tendencies that we're seeing right now. Those are obviously counters. But again, we're able to carry you know, over um, is, is some of, by shifting some of the business segments, we're carrying over some of the strength. And maybe one more note on the, on the VFR segment, the visiting friends and relatives segment, the ethnic travel. Um, this is something, you know, people are, you know, less, let's say, um, you know, uh, they're, they're more focused and this is a more stable demand flow you will, you know, visit your mother and father, you will visit, uh, you know, a, a wedding or a funeral. And hence this, um, this demand is, um, is more inelastic. And that has helped us uh, to really keep that capacity up where we're at levels uh, over 60%. If you uh, ask around with the other European airlines, yeah. uh, those are those are good numbers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I agree with you. And uh, besides this traffic, I think also the leisure traffic will be the first one that will picking up again in the in the new future. How do you see your cost base in these days? Can you compare your cost base with a kind of uh, EasyJet or Ryanair and uh, and uh, so far good, you could settle with your cost base for the future or you have to adjust more things? You, uh, Kurt, you gave me a, a bit of a slam dunk here with the leisure segment. I need to say one more thing because that's the softest of our three segments, but um, I would love to preach uh, testing over quarantine on that one. Uh, because obviously the touristic leisure segment is a segment that is most susceptible to government regulations and travel warnings and bans and and in uh, testing and quarantine uh, policies. And I would, uh, you know, for anybody watching this, uh, our strong, strong position is testing over quarantine. As a lot of people know, 
when flying out of Turkey into Germany, uh, 100% of our passengers are, are tested. Uh, if you don't have a negative test result to show at the, at the gate, at check-in, uh, you will be denied boarding. And uh, Turkey is doing a fantastic job of, of basically making these tests um, and, and making sure that all of our passengers are are 100 tested. So uh, sorry to uh, segue from your from your no question. I'll get to your... Other nations, other nations could be learned from that from this. Experience. Absolutely, 100. Uh, I, I fully agree, and and hence there's no point from from our point of view to have uh, you know drastic uh, quarantine uh, regulations that uh, force people to go into quarantine five days um, uh, five days until they've returned. Um, on your cost question, I think we're very very competitive. I don't want to uh, mention the exact numbers, um, but uh, it's uh, it's I'm I'm very very proud of of the numbers we've achieved. Uh, we can easily um, uh, compete uh, at the levels of of EasyJet, for example. Yeah. Uh, our you know domestic um, competitor in Turkey is Pegasus. I think we're also uh, more than competitive in terms of our cask levels. Um, on that note, um, and so again, as I mentioned, I think if the Sun Express Germany liquidation gets wrapped up um, according to what we've planned and according to everybody's efforts. And also a shout out to our employees, our unions for a real joint effort on this. Mm -hmm. Together with the cost restructuring program that I mentioned, we call it Reshape. Uh, if, if you put that together and then the market sort of KPIs that I just mentioned, the commercial performance right now, uh, I believe Sun Express is in a very, very good position to uh, to pick up and 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 leverage that uh, the rebound uh, uh, from the market uh, recovery to come next year. Before I come to the fleet question, uh, sure. I remember uh, when uh, one of my visits to Turkish Airlines a few years ago, there was sometimes discussions if the if there is a future for Sun, Ex Sun Express in the future between Lufthansa and Turkish Airlines, so if they want to continue. But I think this is no danger anymore. Sun Express. Have a, a future? Are there some discussions about that that uh, Express is needed or not? Uh, if I understand your question correctly, you're asking me whether there's a, a question mark around uh, uh, having Sun Express uh, carry on. Is that, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I think uh, uh, again, uh, Sun Express is you know has its strongholds. Obviously, our headquarters in Antalya uh, in Frankfurt, um, and uh, as a strong base in Izmir. Um, so uh, we are, uh, you know, a major player, uh, especially in the southern uh, Turkish Riviera. Um, we have uh, very well established market shares in these in these markets. Um, and we're basically the home carrier of Izmir and of Antalya. Um, I don't think there is uh, any game plan by either of our shareholders uh, to uh, serve this market without us. Uh, quite the opposite. I think uh, there's, uh, you know, a few ideas floating around what more we could do. Um, you may have seen in the press last week, we have established, um, you know, besides co-chairs with Lufthansa Group out of Munich, we have now added Frankfurt. So we're looking at a lot of uh, sort of additional commercial actions that we can take to, um, uh, to intensify uh, the relationship um, between Lufthansa Turkish and, and us um, uh, as Sun Express. Uh, and Sun Express is a well-known brand, I must say, especially in, in the German-speaking market and, of course, in Turkey. Regarding the, the Boeing 737 MAX, as we, we talked before, and you're an old Boeing operator, how many of them you have on order? And regarding their delay, of course, um, what that means for your uh, fleets now and how you, you adjust about uh, the further development of the fleet and your confidence in the aircraft? Sure. Well, let me start with your last question first. I, um, I mean, from my point of view, um, the 737 MAX uh, will be, you know, one of the, the best tested aircraft um, once it comes back into the markets. Uh, you've seen the announcements by the FAA two weeks ago, by the EASA last week. Um, and so certification and the hearing process that comes along with that uh, seems to be imminent. Um, and again, um, we believe in this aircraft. Uh, we have um, fuel efficiencies of the MAX 8 versus the uh, 737-800 NG of roughly 10 to 15 percent. That's uh, that's quite a ballpark. And um, and obviously, so we we absolutely trust in the aircraft and the one that will be coming out, um, we believe will be one of the best tested aircrafts 
um, in probably uh, aviation history. So uh, no no lack of confidence and no lack of, of trust in the aircraft. You have we are, yeah, yeah, go ahead, sir. Do you have already any idea about the uh, delivery schedule or is it still too early to, to talk about? And how many aircraft do you expect actually? Yeah, so we're, we're operating 59 737-800NG. Um, uh, We've ordered 42 uh, 737 MAX 8s. Um, and uh, some of these have already been uh, produced. Uh, mm. We're in negotiations uh, currently with Boeing. Uh, the ink is not yet dry, hence I will. Uh, I don't want to disclose uh, sort of the, the um, aspects of the deal, uh, but um, obviously given our delivery schedule, uh, once certification is uh, available again, uh, there would be um, quite a number of aircraft coming in. We're in the process of uh, negotiating with Boeing and uh, I think we're on the on the final home stretch on this one. Um, uh, how many aircraft uh, we would accept and take in in 2021 and then the subsequent years. Um, but uh, this is something where we obviously need to take the impact of the Corona pandemic into account. Um, and the only thing I want to say at this point is I believe Sun Express and, and Boeing um, are there's common ground uh, between us um, to uh, to get to a delivery schedule that can be absorbed um, by the Turkish and the European market, and that Sound Express um, is comfortable uh, taking. And you have quite a long term relationship with Boeing. It's you was always a Boeing operator. Uh, the, the Maxes are now planned planned for replacement of the existing fleet, or also to expand. We're looking at both. Um, as I mentioned with the, you know, a reshape program, the market picking back up, obviously the summer of 21 will be a vital, vital uh, time period. Um, and so uh, it, to us, it basically hinges on how does that summer go? Um, what is the development of vaccinations, uh, testing versus quarantine, as I mentioned before, Um and so uh, we could picture both at this at this point in time, but we're uh, you know hoping for the best and preparing for the worst. So if the market doesn't pick back up, obviously yeah. uh, you know a fleet rollover or renewal strategy is also something that we have considered. And uh, again, with the cost benefit of a max over an NG of roughly fifteen percent in fuel costs, um, this is also uh, you know uh, conducive to a, a more positive business case. But you see your airline flexible and agile enough, doesn't matter how the summer next year develop, to react quickly on market conditions? Yes, 100%. I'm not, I'll give you an example. I fly back and forth between Turkey and Germany every week. And uh, most of my time at, on that flight is spent with the cabin crew and the cockpit crew. And, um, you know, the sort of unique character and personality of the Sun Express family, and it really is a family, is the willingness to go through this crisis together. And I'll give you one example, one story that's really touched me personally. Uh, I was sitting in the in the cockpit and the captain said, you know, you've re reduced the, uh, the the salary for some of us. And so we can all get through this crisis together. You know, you have you've forgotten about the overtime pay. You should reduce that, too. And to me, that was a an eye opener, and and in a typical moment of Sun Express culture and spirit, uh, because if you know you had a pilot sitting there basically telling me, Max, uh, you know, take some of my salary. Uh, you've forgotten to take away some of my salary on that point, or reduce some of my salary. I want to do my share and my contribution in, in us uh, weathering this crisis. Honestly, I think that's the spirit. Uh, there's a there's a great agility. Uh, flexibility by staff here to do whatever it takes so we don't have to take structural actions. And as I mentioned, on top of that, we have a very unique and, and very stable Turkish market um, that helps us uh, to, um, to really weather this crisis. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, as you can tell. <laughs> That's cool. That's good news, and especially in times like this, talking about airlines, which very flexible to handle the situations, which not everyone can say this. Just a last question regarding the sure. A30s you was operating also, I think it was for Eurowings. Yes. Uh, what's their plan? Uh, is this aircraft, this sub fleet will still operating or is this long haul wet lease history for Sun Express? Yeah, so we've had seven uh, A330s and this was uh, this was the, um, uh, the leisure uh, touristic uh, uh, offering we had um, for Eurowings, as you already mentioned. Uh, these aircraft have been returned to Lufthansa Group, so Eurowings 
and are flying, but for what they're going to use them, how they're going to use them, where they're going to fly, that would be a question to uh, address to uh, uh, my predecessor. And I think your previous interview, Jens Bischoff, who's now the CEO of Eurowings. So um, uh, that's, uh, that's a good question for that interview. Thank you, Max. Max Kovnowski, the CEO of Sun Express. Thank you much for your time. It's good to hear that uh, the positive and the spirit of Sun Express that, uh, and you see your airline well prepared for the future and all the best. And we keep on following Sun Express in the future. Kurt, thanks for having me. Always fun to talk to you. Take care. And ladies and gentlemen at home, wherever you are in the world, thank you very much for watching us. Take care and bye-bye.